Welcome to my podcast, Martina. And first, please give our listeners a brief introduction about you and what you do. Um, hello, good morning. My name is Martina. I'm from the Netherlands, and um, uh, my job is uh, uh, instructor and horse trainer. And I work for many years in uh, in China, also in other countries with China. The most of the time. When I was really young, I always dream about uh, some horse riding career, like uh, a good rider or a good trainer. And now, uh, this is now my job. First in the Netherlands, I have my own stable and I do a lot of competitions. And later, uh, when I uh, sell my place, then I move to some other countries, especially to China. I was wor I working there for now for seven years and help them with the whole horse equestrian world and everything around that. You have worked seven years in China. Could you please share with us about the equestrian world, the scene in China when you were there working there? Okay, the first time when I was in China for the horse industry, it was a little bit of a shock for me because everything was in the beginning. Uh, horses enough, uh, stuff enough. Almost a lot of more stuff than in Holland. I don't know why this was to have so many people working for them. Um, but in the beginning, everything was difficult. The, the horse equipment, the, the stables, the, the feet for the horses. Um, I also see that the many, many people that have really no idea about horses, but also no idea about animals. And I think the, Horse industry is a really big business because um, all the kids want to do it. Um, it is more like, okay, I think for a lot of parents it's important that uh, your kids can do some sports. And I think horse riding is one of the sports. But I also see it is only for the more richer people because horse riding is in China is really expensive. And I understand because um, they buy the horses in Europe. Uh, the, the food, uh, everything they must import. But now after seven years, uh, China is grow so much with the horse industry and now they, um, yeah, they can do a lot of things by themselves, but still the instructors or managers, most of the big uh, places, they uh, hire some people from Europe. And um, that is in the beginning, it was really low level, everything. They buy really high level horses, but the, ri the riding was really low level, but also the management was low level. Uh, the coaches, everything was low level. But I think uh, after seven years, they grow a lot. Um, I understood from you and you, you really trans uh, transferred everything to China by using the Dutch way of managing uh, an horse uh, stable. Uh, could you please share this process with us? Because it's so interesting. Yeah, the first thing is, uh, okay, after Chen Chen, they asked me if I want to come to Shanghai. And it is also important, my boss in Shanghai, he is not Chinese, he is from Taiwan. And I don't know, because he is a really, uh, easy boss uh, for the work because I see a lot of other places if they are really have a Chinese mind then some things are a little bit difficult. My boss is also studied in Canada and that was also easier to contact. The first time he is uh, he come to Holland because for him it was really important to see how we do it here and that was also the first time that I met him and I eat with him. And then we talk about it. Uh, for him, it was important that we do the same thing what we do in Holland, but then in China. And he asked me if I want to do that. I, I said, OK, I try first. OK, we make some deal for three months. But OK, after three months, yeah, we are not ready there. because. And the, when I come there, there was this, some stables, 20 horses maybe 10 horses they were not okay for the job they took too wild or too young or sick or i don't know what there's maybe 10 left but in the beginning was okay because we had no clients we really start from zero and then every week more 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 and 
they built a beautiful restaurant and in first uh, month I live in the wedding suit in in suite in some uh, hotel <laughs> it was also really nice every day your bed was with flowers <laughs> it was nice and uh, okay and then then we built together uh, with the staff it was four instructors and two people on the office but the office girls never see a horse before and then the problems coming because all the parents they're coming on the office and sometimes they have some questions or they complain about things this we also train the office girls we we put them in the middle of the arena and tell them okay uh, then you then they can see what we mean and that is also in uh easier because they can explain to parents what's happened what goes wrong why the kids is crying why the horse is not listen and uh, and really after three years the, the 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 girls from the office they are a little bit instructors they can understand everything but they also can explain the parents this was good and the second thing was the coaches they're really horse boys they come from mongolia from the mountains they are really horse uh, people I had some um, um, people from Holland and I always told them that the coaches there, they're a little bit like horse whispers. They, they are so good with the horses, but for the rest, about teaching, about training a horse, they don't know. But, but if you have a difficult horse, they really can work with it. That is really nice. But, um, okay, then the progress start because they standing in the middle of the arena where they have no idea just in the beginning the clients the, the kids they put the kid on the horse they told them hold the saddle put them on the on the track and go really for 45 minutes to one side in the in the trot and then after 45 minutes stop and the kids go home and next week again that was the only thing what they do Okay, and that was also, you know, they only go to the left side with riding and training and teaching because that is from the racing industry. They only see they go to the uh, left side. This is also, it cost me years to let them go to the right. And also all the horses have problems to the right side because they train them only to the left. But there was something in their mind. But my boss always support me always that if the coaches have some problem with me or with the other staff and my boss always told no we do the dutch way we not do the chinese way we are not a chinese company we are a dutch company and after seven years uh now they are really dutch everyone one is coming there also my friends from holland they say yeah you are in china but it is a dutch company and it is really working because after seven years for a lot of companies uh, I see around me, like some restaurants or other things, always they finished after two, three years, really successful, and then everything goes down. But there, because they are already seven years, that is for, I, I think, the horse riding school, that is really good. And also after seven years, still the same horses. That is also important because the they not uh, let them work too hard. They have a, we have a big uh, whiteboards on the, on the wall. And every day we make a, a plan about how many hours the horse have a work or who is riding on what horse, not too heavy people, uh, sometimes uh, some beginners, sometimes better people to keep the horses in a good shape. And we, we do that every morning all together with the whole staff and that that is also how you save your horses and your clients i think and i think we are the only company a uh, riding school um who do the um, the planning by ourselves because i see a lot of places then chinese customers they can make a choice by themselves about i want to have that uh, instructor or that horse but in the in our company it was not possible because if you do that, that means that some instructors have a lot of clients and the others not. And also um, some horses have maybe five hours a day and other horses do nothing. Just we try to um, yeah, give all the horses the same work 
And but that is also important. Then you have 20 good horses because if 10 horses not okay, that means that you have a 10 times a bad lesson. Does that means we switch the horses all the time? If we think they are not good enough, then we buy another one. Is that just a little bit how, how it works there? And it is working. And they earn a lot of money. And after seven years, still a lot of clients. This is also important, I think. And everybody is happy there. Also the staff. So interesting to hear this from you, Martina. And uh, I think also this, uh, this riding school is one of the most uh, successful uh, riding school in China. I think seven years ago, uh, when you just started in Shanghai, I came uh, to visit you. Uh, at that time, you, know, you have a lot, a few horses import, imported from uh, uh, the Netherlands. They are very expensive horses uh, working <laughs> there. And also a few horses from Mongolia. Um, and they are not very expensive horses. So they were, the horses were treated differently. And you were really making effort to educate the coaches there to treat all of these uh, horses equally and to let them work equally. And because, uh, yeah, the Western horses are really taken really good care of. They could, uh, they got another kind of, uh, uh, uh Food and, uh, and, but the Chinese horses, uh, they were treated differently and uh, they also work, um, much, yeah, many more hours. So you were in that phase seven years ago to make this, uh, mind shift, uh, make this, uh, educate the coaches, uh, yeah, by telling them how important it is to take good of the, care of the horses. Especially what really impressed me, you told the coaches, those horses are all employees. We really need to treat all of them equally and, uh, and, uh, we need to take good care of them so they can work together with us because we are, uh, yeah, we are a team. So could you please share this, um, challenge with us? Because uh, I see this happening <laughs> at uh, many riding schools in China and many people do the same. Yeah, because uh, in the beginning it was difficult because they're okay. Some horses are important; they are really expensive. But you know, the the the, the whole thing in Holland is different from China. There's some horses when they moved to China, it was the, the training was difficult, the food was difficult, the stables, everything was difficult for the horses. That that means they are not the best horses for China and not for the customers. Too difficult to ride, and. Um, and in our place was also difficult because when I come in the beginning, the Dutch horses, maybe they were maybe 10 times more expensive than the local horses. But when I come inside there, I see the stables of the Dutch horses were so clean. They have some bedding to the knees. But when I go uh, to the other horses, they have nothing on the floor. They, they're sleeping on the stones, yeah, really nothing. They had a leg, a lot of leg problems. Um, about the food, they imported some special food from America for the Dutch horses, but the local horses, they, they eat almost nothing. They all look bad. Uh, no medicines, no dentists, no nothing. This, then when I was there maybe for five, six months, I tried to change that, but nobody listened because also the, the stuff on the stable, the, the man, his mindset was really like, okay, you are expensive. That means we treat you good, we feed you good, but the rest you're local. And not. But after five months, I have some, we had some program that we, we have every week, we put all the lesson inside and you can see on the end of the month, how many they earn the horses. And then you saw after five months, the Dutch horses earn almost nothing. They only cost money and they cost us a lot of time because we must train them. If we not do that, they are crazy and all the customers fall on the floor. And the local horses, they cost nothing. They do a lot of work and they're really easy to ride. This, okay. Then on one day I, I asked my boss, can you, can you come to the stable? Because the problem, I cannot change it. Nobody wants to listen to me. They think you are crazy that because I ask. Give the local horses the same food as the Dutch horses, and they not want to do it. 
because it is too expensive and blah, blah, blah. And then I asked my boss, okay, can you come? Then we walked to the stable and then because he is not a horseman, he don't know, I also don't know. And then I told him, okay, you see the stable so clean and nice. You see the horse and nice blankets on, everything was okay. And then five steps further, you see your local horse, nothing on the floor. He is a little bit uh, skinny. He's not looking well and long hair and not well trained, nothing. But then I show him the board and then you can see how much work they have and what they earn. And then I told him, I think if you treat your local horses better, they can make more and more money and they, they earn now the money for the Dutch horses. You can keep your Dutch horse because the local horses make so much money. And then he understands because he said, yeah, you're all right. And then all together, all the stuff together, we sit on the table. And I remember he told the stable uh, stuff, okay, from tomorrow, I want to see that all the horses have the same bedding, everything, all horses, and you give them all the same food. Okay, let we make some board on the stable and I write how much food they need, also the expensive food. And everybody think now you are crazy and this is not working. But after some months, the, the local horses work more and more hours, um, especially the small ones, because if you are a small pony in China and you are a Chinese pony, then you are really like nothing. But in Shanghai, we have a lot of kids. That means the, the small ponies, they cost nothing, but they earn a lot. And that means uh, all the small ponies, they have their own stable. They go to the dentist, uh, blankets. As they were in really good shape and they can make more money. But still, in the whole process, I think it takes us two years to make them the same, especially for the stuff. Because sometimes I come in the stable and then I ask, um, I ask him, I see you just, you just feed the horses, but you forget the local horses. And then he told me, oh, yeah, sorry, I forget that I, I must also feed them. Things like that. That cost me two years to make them all the same. But, yeah, after two years, you can see that uh, the Dutch horses still have not enough work because uh, the lessons are more expensive. The horses are more difficult for maybe if you have another kind of stable. Well, this is really a, a stable with a lot of beginners and kids. And Dutch horses are... Okay, high level horses, but not easy for kids. Too big, too, too, too strong, too high level. And the local horses are more easier to ride, smaller. There's, that are the horses that, that make them much of money. And uh, still, uh, when I, I always like to go to other stables to see how they do it. And still, I see these problems. If I see, I don't know. Uh, where the horse come from, but I can see on the stables where they come from, Europe or local, because still in a, a lot of stables, the the horses from Europe are yeah, looking better, the stables are cleaner, blankets on, and the local horses still do not treat them so well. I see them many, many places. But if you have, uh, if you do it like a business, then I, I think it's not really smart. If you treat them better, then they make more money. And I always told the coaches, if you train them well and treat them, then they are health. And that, that means that you as coach make more money because if the horses are healthy, then you can use them every lesson and you also make more, more money. But uh, in uh, Shanghai, they really understand that now. And that is easy. And their mind just changes. Uh, but uh, still, I think... They are maybe one of the only stables where it is like this. So that's really very important mind shift. And I think you did it in a, a very smart way. You just let the data uh, prove it and uh, you show the data and uh, sh show all of the 
uh, statistics uh, to the stable owner. Uh, Wen Hai, yeah, I think that's the the best way to convince him. Also, the employee, the coaches, uh, look at uh, the data. Then you see uh, how they and those Chinese horses uh, are doing, and they are making a lot of money for us. And we really need to treat them very well. And the, Martina, if you look at um, the approaches of teaching uh, riders, how did you educate them? To become good coaches, what's the education process in the last seven years, and what are the challenges uh, for you uh, to yeah to really uh, bring their um, coaching level, their horse riding uh, coaching level um, uh, to the Dutch standards? Um, yes, in the beginning it was difficult because uh, there was only uh, only one coach. His English was good, yeah, and the rest was mm, maybe they can understand me a little bit, but English no difficult. But uh, all the customers, the now the most of the customers, and they were kids, and their English was really perfect. This, uh, I also use a lot of kids to um, translate or explain some things. And what I do in the beginning was, okay, first, uh, it was also my first time in China. I had no idea how it works. Uh, I always, okay, they told me before, I come from the north of Holland and I always say everything, what I think, I don't know. And they told me when I go to China, not do that. No, not do what you always do, not say everything wait a little bit, but I, I'm not the person for that. Just, I say everything. And my Chinese boss say now, you are like a Chinese now. I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm still the same. I do what I always do. But uh, in the beginning, it was difficult to talk to the coaches that they do something wrong or they must change. This in the beginning, if I see a lesson and the, the things goes wrong a little bit, then I go inside and I told them that this goes wrong and I help them a little bit, but that is not done because for the coach, that is really difficult if you want to change it with the customer inside. That is not possible because then the coaches feel a little bit um, that they are not good enough. Then you must do it in another way. This may be what I do. I let it go. And after the lesson, I ask why he do something like that. And many, many times they have no answer about it. They don't know why. They only do it because they see this before, because they like to copy everything. Yeah, they're not thinking for themselves. And with riding lesson, that is really difficult because the horse, he do something for himself. The kids do something for themselves. And if the coaches have no idea to how they change that, then it is difficult. Okay. This every time when I have a lesson, uh, one of the coaches was inside with me because uh, they must clean the arena with a poop. But what we do in the, most of the time, I standing in the middle and they're standing beside me and then they see what I do. And sometimes I also tell them, what do you think? Uh, oh yeah. What is also nice. They see a lot of films on YouTube. We do that. We, we, I said, okay, you must see this film on YouTube and then see what the instructor do with it. Does that improve the teaching really well? And yeah, in the beginning it was like this. Um, the Dutch instructor, they have the, a lot of lesson, more lesson than the other coaches. And we also, we take all the higher level lesson. And the coaches, they take the most of the time the beginner lesson. If the beginners are good enough, then we take them from them. Okay. And also a little bit sad because if you are a Chinese coach and you start with a beginner from level zero, and if the kids are on level five or something, then goodbye, you go to the Dutch trainer. That is not nice. Just later we give them their own lesson and they can keep the uh, customers or kids and in the beginning I give all the group classes because in Holland we have a lot of group classes and in China no only private lesson but for kids is the group class is so much more fun There's, I try to change that and for some parents difficult because they only want to have a private lesson for the kids 
but after some years, the group classes, they're growing. And also that is more interest. You only need one instructor, seven horses together. Everything is easier uh, and you make more money. And it is uh, for the space is better. You can have seven kids together. This was also really working. And then later we give the Chinese coaches their own crew classes. Then they can prove the riding. And sometimes I help them. And what we also do, we make a plan every week. Every week, one of us make a plan, what we practice that week. This one week I do it and I say, okay, this week we only practice some transitions. And the other, and then we all do that. And we see, uh, to the, the coaches see my lesson and they, they do a little bit the same. But the other week they make the choice. Like, okay, this week we practice a small circle and then we all do that. And, and you take your own level if you have really good kids then you do the small circus in the canter if you have beginners you do it in the walk and we do that every week every month every year because all the time was a dutch coach there and then the COVID is coming and then we must stay in holland and then at that moment they were alone they were really alone in the beginning was a lot of problems and then we sent every week the lesson plan to china and we see some videos, what they're doing, and they send me some problems. And then, okay, now they really can do it by themselves. If we look at this uh, aspect, Martina, if you look at uh, your experiences, what you have learned in the last seven years, educating these coaches and manage uh, the stable, the riding school, and what kind of... Um, advices you can give um, to the uh, coaches who are interested uh, to go to China and to work there and to really also um, help the stables and the riding schools um, to grow. Okay, of course you're working in, uh, in Asia far away, but I think it's important that you still keep the, your standards, not change too much. Some Sometimes it's difficult, but Okay, sometimes you want that the horses all have the best food, but if it is not possible, then you try to do your best to make it better. There's um, not change too much because you are in China. But uh, what I really learned is that when I ask for something or change, then in Holland, then okay, maybe they change the same day or you have an idea they really want to change. But when I was in China, sometimes I want to change and then everybody was so, okay, yeah, we see or maybe or just not possible or other things. And then I really learned, okay, it looked like they are not interested in it to want to change, but after some days or months or years, then suddenly it happens. This I also learned to not, uh, some things not push too much, wait a little bit because uh, that is the same if you teach kids for all my colleagues from, from Holland, they always said when they teach Chinese kids, they look not interest. They are, that is how they, that is the, the difference between, uh, Chinese and kids from Europe. Like Chinese kids are a little bit more closed. Uh, look like if you see them right in there, they're really not enjoying it. And if you work with Chinese people, sometimes it looks like they not listen to you or they're not enjoy it or they're not happy with you, but that is more how they are. And if you're there long enough and you understand a little bit, then you can see that really they really like it and they really listen, but they are not like us, like, okay, um, they not express themselves so much. They're a little bit more close. That was one thing. And the other thing is, um, I also learned there that if it is not arranged today, then it comes tomorrow. <laughs> that is for me also something is, it's okay. But maybe, that is maybe also how I am. I always want to arrange it now, but that is not possible there. And yeah, I want to say you must not change too much. And so, and it is important that you understand how they are because I travel also in China. I'm working uh, with um, 
Chinese people, but also the, the, the girls from the office. We eat together, we live together in one apartment. I learn a lot. In the beginning, I was more like, oh, do, why? Why is it not possible? I always push them, push them. And then the office girl told me in the evening when we eat, no, oh, you cannot do that because this, that. And then so that is important that you listen to them and then you understand them better. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Martina. Really interesting uh, um, elements uh, you have mentioned. Yeah. If we, um, uh, if we look at um, yeah, uh, look at uh, the story, um, the the advices you shared, I can see that building relationship is very important part uh, of yeah. uh, your success in China. How you uh, get along with the coaches, with the office girls. Uh, if you look at uh, the uh, approaches uh, of building relationships with the riders and also with uh, the coaches in China. Uh, what are the differences from building relationship uh, in the Netherlands and how you can advise uh, people when they go to China and uh, um, what kind of approaches they can better take to build really good relationships with uh, the people, um, Chinese people there? For me, it was important because if you come for the first time in China, then the, also the really, really big difficult thing is like, you have the boss, you have the manager, you have the other manager, more down, 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 down. You have all the uh, stuff. And then maybe on the lowest place is, is the woman who clean the floor or clean the stables. And for me, it was from the first time when I come to China. In Holland, we don't have that. Yeah? The, the woman who clean the house is for me the same if you are working on the bank. Yeah, for me, it's the same. And I think it is important that when you're working on a, on a company there, and it's not important if it is a writing company or something else, that you can work with all the staff and if you um, treat them all the same. For me, it's important. In the beginning, they don't understand that because um, when I, 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 I also eating with the stable uh, uh, people, for me, it was the same. And when we have the Chinese New Year, we eat all together. It was not like uh, you are lower than us. And that was also maybe because the team was so good. Everybody was the same. This, uh, the boss also eat with us. And I think a lot of problems in, uh, in companies like that is that uh, the lowest people, they did not treat them well. And that means if you do that, then they also, the work is a little bit lower level. They're not do their best. They're not a team. Because I think if you go there, then you must not only think, okay, I'm there, the, the, the head chief instructor or something. Okay, I go inside and I, I, I give the lesson and I, I manage the, the thing and that is it. No, I think it is important that you uh, do everything. But... Uh, for all the other Dutch coaches, they come there. They always told me, and they also work uh, now sometimes at other companies. And they also told me that, like in Shanghai, that is one big family always. This is, I think, it's also because we start from the beginning all together. And I also think that it's a little bit because uh, my not Chinese boss, he is not really Chinese. First time when you go there, when I go there, and also all my other coaches we all go there because we are interested in the whole country culture everything okay and then uh, we, the coaching we can do that of course but in the in the first thing we all go there because that is so nice sometimes when I have uh, tried to find new coaches then I have first some email contact and thing and uh, if I read the emails I already can see what kind of person is it because some the first rule is what is the salary yeah and other people they never talk about the salary they only ask me how is it what we do how is it how are the people how are the kids and that is better because and at the end i told them okay this is your salary but i think that is not important the, the, what they want is they want to help china and they want to work there and want to see the country but they not go for the salary and there's all the people who work there for me, 
they're um, they always like that and not first thing what is a salary they not go for the money they want that is some lifetime experiencing yeah this is very important i think if you take that attitude then you will really enjoy your time in china you you will uh, really learn a lot of things also uh, from the people there and uh, that will really um, yeah enrich your uh, life and uh, martina if we look at this process you went to china you educated the coaches and the uh, question uh, sector is growing very fast in the last few years and they there are a lot of demands for good coaches but um a lot there are not many uh, education um schools or or vocational schools like uh, in Holland uh, which help educate those coaches and people all in China all need western coaches to educate the local coaches but this is very difficult process uh, you have uh, went through and the visa is very difficult and also uh, it's very expensive they need to take care of everything for the western coaches this is really not durable um, uh, system if you look at the sector uh, in china as a whole the equestrian sport what would be a good way to help uh coaches grow there and uh, to give good lessons and to adapt a good uh, learning system there i think now after so many years um last uh, year i was in chenzhen and the the level of the teaching from the chinese coaches is grown so much i see so many companies they really can do it by themselves uh, in shanghai the coaches are so good now it is not needed uh, maybe i say the wrong thing but it is not for some companies it is really not needed that we are there anymore no the level is good enough and uh, and in la in chenjen there are really high level coaches no problem the coaches the riding is also much more high level than before this is not, not that is not the problem anymore i think the problem is the clients because some clients but i also think maybe after 10 years has also changed for a lot of clients is like this if you don't have a, a coach from europe then your lesson is a uh, low level if you are on a party and you told my kid have a lesson from a coach from holland that is really more better than you riding in a mercedes or i don't know what kind of car that that is more the thinking um that is still why they ask for um instructors from Europe it is not because they are so so much more better at teaching it is more like the face of the place the riding school then they can say okay we have some chief instructor from Europe and they think but it is they think then the business is better and maybe 7 years before that was of course better but now a change like they import a lot of horses because everybody want to tell them friends yeah i'm riding on a horse from europe um the prices from the lesson on the dutch horses are much higher than on a local horse that but, uh, if you have a kid 6 years old the riding is zero yeah then why is it needed you put your kid on a high level dutch horse is three times more expensive it is maybe better and easier for the kids to learn ride on a local horse and it is much cheaper but they don't want to do that because if some other parents see that that the kids sit on a local horse that is not done and that is still the biggest thing there and it, i think it, it's changed because i see some clients in shanghai they only want to ride uh have a lesson with a, a, a dutch coach and on the moment we cannot come anymore uh because the covid of course they all changed to the chinese coaches now there is a a, a coach from europe back but her lesson are so uh not, not not much lesson for her because all the kids want to stay by their own chinese coach because they are crow so much they have fun they like it this why they changed uh the kids are okay maybe the parents want to change sometimes a little bit because 
of course, nicer if you have your photo with your kid with the with, uh, instructor from Europe. I don't know what. But it is the same story with the local horses and the uh, horses from Europe. That is more some mindset. But really, maybe this is not a really clever story. But for a lot of companies, they not need us anymore. I'm so happy that uh, from inside out you shared this um, part, and because um, mm, uh, you also um, confirm that the levels of the coaches and instructors they have grown so much in the last ten years. Because uh, when I went to China six, seven years ago and uh, very much involved in this area, the coaches uh, really they they were struggling a lot to um, give lessons, just like you said. But I'm so happy to hear that.、Um, yeah, this situation really changed. To wrap up、uh, this po um, podcast, uh, Martina, uh, can you give some、uh, some general、uh, tips for the people who want to go to China, discover、uh, the culture, to work there, or to do business there? Yeah, you must take、uh, time because everything goes a little bit slower than here in in Holland. This, if you wanted, if you come somewhere and and you want to do the management, take your time, <laughs> not too fast, because、uh, if you are pushing too much, then they are all upset, and then you're you're already. Yeah, I think it is not possible, and I, I think it's also important that you have a good relationship with the, the rest of the team.、Uh, for me, they all the same, always. And if if you you treat them all the same, then now then it is easier to work with them, and、uh, then they help you with everything because the language is also difficult in some places. But my relationship with the, with the cleaners is the same as with my boss. But in China, it's really like if you are the boss, we do everything, and but the boss, his ideas are not always the best. Sometimes. He is all. It is not a, some like some god. And if you also do it in a nice way, you also can tell the highest boss that maybe change a little bit, and that is working. But because if you say nothing, they never change, and that is also not working. Because if they hire someone from Europe, they do that because they want to change a little bit. Like the if they not do that, then they can also hire some. One from China, then it's not needed to hire us. But sometimes it is difficult to tell them that on a little bit nice way. <laughs> not make them angry, but you can tell them sometimes what you think. Yeah, it's really uh, nice, uh, Martina. Really nice tips, and、uh, thank you so much for sharing.、Um, Your experiences and、uh, your so many nice、uh, stories working in China and、uh, connect with Chinese people and teach the people and、uh, coaches there、uh, to improve their skills.、Uh, thank you so much. And、uh, how can people connect with you, Martina, if they are interested in what you do? Now I'm fa on Facebook, on my name,、um, Instagram. My then is the company name is Aqua Dynamics. I will put、uh, your Facebook link and also your Instagram link in the、uh, podcast show notes and uh, and uh, YouTube show notes, so people can get in touch with you. And、uh, Martina, thank you so much for yeah for this conversation. So fascinating. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening to our cultures and our world podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to leave a review on your podcast platform and share the podcast with other people. In this way, you will help me reach more listeners. By subscribing to this podcast on YouTube and other platforms, you will never miss an episode. I also love to hear from you. Please share your thoughts, questions, and feedback by sending email to mei at ibo dot com. M E I at i i b b o o dot com, or connecting with me on LinkedIn or Instagram under M E I Y A N G. If you want to learn more about how I facilitate intercultural collaboration and the kindness projects I support, be sure to visit my website at ibo dot com. 
iipboo.com as a podcast dedicated to fostering cross-cultural connections. I believe that every story shared is a step towards a more united world. Thank you for supporting my mission and joining me on this journey.